everybody. Hola, hola a todos. How are you doing today? ¿Cómo estás? How was your week? ¿Cómo estuvo tu semana? Hey, I'm going to start throwing you a lot of more Spanish because even though I'm not spelling it for you, I want your ears to start getting familiar with the Spanish phrases, okay? So I'm going to get a little tougher on you. No, just kidding. Um, I just want to You want you to learn more, get familiar with the sound of the words and stuff. Always translating for you, of course. So um, I hope you have a wonderful, you had a wonderful week. And I thank you so much for being here with, with us today on episode 13 of Spanish with Carla. Please remember that you can always find every single podcast on our website, SpanishWithCarla.com. Please don't forget that Carla is spelled with the K, all right? K-A-R-L-A. And we also have our Facebook group and page, Spanish with Carla. Um, and for now, that's it, okay? So you can send feedback, you can ask questions, um, you can um, post also if you have, you know, a question or if you want to post, share some information with somebody, you can do it. Some people upload videos, like live videos and share stuff with us, and we appreciate that. We love all the interactions that we have with you guys. So thanks so much for that. All right, so let's start, as, as we talked about last week, uh, something very important is the professions. When you go, uh, you know, it might be that you go to one of these Spanish-speaking countries because of a work trip, right? And you might have to interact with people that, I mean, they might speak Spanish, but when you need to, well, in English, but when you need to ask for the person you're looking for, let's say, for example, you go, and you're looking for a doctor. Well, I already told you that in episode episode two, so that's an easy one because it gets pronounced, as, uh, written, spelled the same way as it does in English. It just sounds a little different. In English, it's doctor, and in Spanish, it's doctor. But it's the same spelling. Now, I'm going to use these, all these uh, I am, soy, and estoy also to practice with this profession. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone, all right? So you can ask somebody, you know, say the secretary, I don't know if they're speaking English or not. You can just go and say, uh, where is the doctor? You remember that question? ¿Dónde está el doctor? You can go and ask for that person that you're looking for, that professional. So let's... Uh, learn more of those. Like I said, we just we already know how to say doctor, so I'm not going to really go into that, especially because it's spelled the same way that it is spelled in English. All right? So if you want to say that you're a doctor in Spanish, do you know how you would say, yo soy doctor? If you are a woman or somebody that identifies as a woman, yo soy doctora. Don't forget that. Professions, for the most part, when are going to have gender and also number. Okay? If we are talking about the different persons, right? Tú eres doctor. Tú eres doctora. Él es doctor. Ella es doctora. Nosotros somos, listen to this one, doctores. So, when it's the R, you're going to add ES. Nosotros somos doctores. Nosotras somos doctoras. Ellos son doctores. Ustedes son doctoras. Okay? I'm not spelling all that because you already know. We have gone through that. This is just practice for you. All right? So, you can keep listening and getting familiar with the words. All right? Perfect. So, now, let's talk about another profession. Let's talk about attorneys, okay? So, uh, an attorney in Spanish is going to be abogado. Abogado. A as an apple, B as in boy, A 
I mean, O as in Oscar, G as in golf, A as in apple, D as in dog, and if you're talking about a male person, it's going to be an O as in Oscar. But if you're talking about a, fem a female, it's going to be A as in apple. Let's check how that is. Yo soy abogado. Tú eres abogada. Él es abogado. Ella es abogada. Nosotros somos abogados. Ellos, ellas son abogadas. Ustedes son abogados. So, look at this, the difference between doctor or doctor and abogado, okay? Think uh, on, the, on the masculine form of the conjugation of the word, okay? Doctor. It ends with an R or with a consonant, okay? So, the plural or to make the plural, you have to add ES on the masculine, right? Abogado, since it ends on a, on a vowel, then you just have to add an S. You see that? Look at it, review it, and that's going to be, for the most part, a rule on this conjugation. Just keep that in mind. The, the feminine is much easier because in, it's, it's the same. It's, you just add an A. Okay, see, you see, guys are the complicated part of this. Nah, just kidding. Okay, guys, don't hate me, right? It's just, just bringing a little joke here. <laughs> um, now, let's talk about another profession. How about an engineer? Okay, do you have your, your pen or computer or whatever you're taking notes? This is a little harder than the other ones. It's I as an igloo, N as a Nancy, G as in golf, E as an elephant, N as a Nancy, I as an igloo, E as an elephant, R as in rabbit, and same thing. If it, we're talking about um, a masculine, it's going to be O as an Oscar. And, okay, this is kind of a dilemma. Many people, for some, and I think the reason why is because in Mexico or in the Latin American, Latin American countries, it used to be that engineer was a career that was mostly for men. So I heard people saying, la ingeniero, okay? Even if it was a woman, they would say, la ingeniero, okay? Now, again, there's a new wave now where they say, la ingeniera, and I think that's right. I mean, if we call a doc, uh, doctor, doctora, why not call ingen an, in an ingeniera, ingeniera, if she's a woman, right? So that's going to be up to you. No, it's not going to be considered wrong if you, if you decide to just say ingeniero. That, but to me, and this is just, remember, I'm not a Spanish teacher. This is my personal opinion. Um, I believe that if you're talking about a woman, you should say, tú eres ingeniera. Ella es ingeniera. Yo soy ingeniero. Ellos son ingenieros. You see that? This is again, it's, it's a vowel, it's the O, so you just add an S. Ellos son ingenieros. Ustedes son ingenieras. A nosotras somos ingenieras. Okay? <clears throat> Listen to that practice. Okay? And again, we're trying to do it fast so we can go through most of the professions that I have here. So, the next one is going to be teacher. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this word. This word, uh, teacher, let's spell it for you first, okay? It's maestro or maestra, okay? M as in Mary, A as in Apple, E as in Elephant, S as in Sam, T as in Tomato, R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, or... If it's a lady, a, a girl, a woman, it's going to be A as an apple. Maestro, maestra. Yo soy maestra. Tú eres maestro. Él es maestro. Ella es maestra. Nosotros somos maestras. Ellos son maestros. Ustedes son maestros. Can you see again? We have a vowel at the end, which is my O or A. 
And then we're just going to add the S at the end. Easy peasy. Now, when somebody is like a super uh, expert on something, many people call uh, anybody related to art. So if somebody is a writer or is a painter or is, they also call them maestro, but he has another, yeah, he can teach you, but he doesn't. This is more like you're giving the, the respect of calling them kind of a master. You see what I mean? So you might hear that ma el maestro Diego Rivera. Well, Diego Rivera was not a teacher, right? Diego Rivera was a painter. He was the guy that made Frida's colors miserable. <laughs> well, you know, that's a very interesting. If you ever want to watch a movie, watch Frida. That was a very interesting movie. I don't I don't hate the man. I know that he was really mean, but I still have a picture of of his uh, the ones he made in my house because he was an amazing painter. Um he loved tulips. So the, he, I like tulips too and it was a it's a wonderful picture. Um but um that's the way if you hear somebody that is a painter or a sculptor or a writer or a musician also. Okay? You might hear El Maestro uh, Luciano Pavarotti, per se. Right? So then you know that it's not that Luciano Pavarotti is um, a teacher. It's just that they are giving the honor of calling him, him like a master. All right? I just wanted to clarify that because you're going to hear it. And I don't want you to think, oh, well, did she teach me wrong? Or is he a teacher? I want you to understand that you can use that word in different occasions. Primarily, is going to be teacher as, you know, the person that teaches. But you can hear it too in those circumstances. All right. So let's go with counselor. Okay. So counselor um, is going to be basically consejero. Okay. So, consejero is spelled C as in cat, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, E as in elephant, J as in John, E as in elephant, R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, or if you are a woman, it's going to be an A as in apple. Yo soy consejera. Tú eres consejero, él es consejero, ella es consejera, nosotros, nosotras somos consejeras, ustedes son consejeros, ellos o ellas son consejeros o consejeras. Ustedes son consejeros. And uh, so this is the thing, okay? Um, I told you before that many people... Even when they're talking about woman, they still say nosotros. I, you know, normally when we're talking about only girls, I normally say nosotras. It's not going to be wrong no matter how you do it. If you are talk, if you are hanging out with your four girlfriends, you're just there, all girls, and you say, nosotros queremos, o nosotra, nosotros somos maestras. It's not wrong, Okay. In, in, at this point, this is more like a it's something that has changed, and maybe because of more woman rights and stuff. Now it's it's you know people are doing more than nosotras, which I think is right, right? Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, so the next one is going to be nurse. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you two words on this one. Okay. Um, when somebody is, okay, let me spell the word for you first, and then I'm going to teach you the other word. Enfermera is E as an elephant, N as an Nancy, F as an Frank, E as an elephant, R as an Robert, M as an Mary, E as an elephant, R as an Robert, A as an apple. If you are a guy, it's going to be an O as an Oscar. All right? Enfermero, enfermera. Okay, see, this is the reason why I'm telling you this, because in English, it's much easier. You're a doctor. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, a man, or whatever. You are a doctor. In Spanish, you need to worry about gender, right? And, uh, you know, number is the same as in English. We just add the S, right? Or the ES also. So 
uh, whatever, you know, the, the requirements are. But <clears throat> the thing is, you just need to think about who you are talking about, right? If you are generalizing, say, if you're saying, I need a doctor, necesito un doctor. Okay, and remember what we said earlier uh, last uh, podcast about the A and N or A N and that change to unos unas or un una. You remember that? When you are saying, I need a doctor, necesito un doctor. Remember what I said about it's not, it's the article that is not defined. Okay. You're not saying, I need this specific doctor. It needs to be uh, tall and cute. And No, you're not saying that, right? You're saying, I just need a doctor. I don't care if it's a man, a woman. I just need a doctor. It's not specified. Now, if I'm calling and I'm saying, necesito al doctor so-and-so. I need to talk to Dr. Smith. So you are. You are specifying. It's different. You know what I mean? I need to talk to the doctor, the doctor, that specific doctor that you're calling. Okay? So I just wanted to bring that up because that's going to be something that is going to be useful for you when you when you think about those articles as well. Uh, and after these parentheses, see? Um, now let's uh, continue with enfermero and enfermera. And what I wanted to tell you is that enfermera, if you want to remember this, is, is basically the person that takes care of the ill, right? So ill in Spanish is almost spelled the same way. Listen, E as an elephant, N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, E as an elephant, R as in Robert, M as in Mary. We stop right there. If you're a guy or if it's a guy, enfermo. If it's a girl, enferma. You hear that? It's almost the same. Enfermo, enferma, enfermera, enfermero. Okay? And I'm gonna um I'm gonna use this just to, to show you something. Okay? Okay, listen to this. Yo soy enfermera. Listen. Tú estás enfermo. Now, but that's going to change. You see that? Yo estoy enfermo. Yo or enferma. Yo soy enfermera. You see what I mean? I'm a nurse. I'm going to be a nurse forever. Even if I change profession, I still have a degree and I'm still a nurse, even if I don't work as a nurse, right? So it's not going to change. So yo soy enfermera. Right? Yo estoy enferma. Now, I have the flu, whatever. Knock on wood. <laughs> so, um, I just want to bring those concepts because with these professions, you need to use the verb me always. Okay? Always. So, uh, I think it's very related. And you probably feel like, oh, she's drilling those uh, set and start. Well, I'm doing it because you're going to need, that's the verb you're going to use the most in Spanish, like we do in English. And unfortunately, in Spanish, it's more complicated, so it's good that you work on it. Um, so um, let's do the conjugation using enfermo and enfermera, okay? So yo soy enfermera, tú estás enfermo, él es enfermero, ella está enferma, nosotros somos enfermeros. Ellas son enfermeras. Ustedes están enfermos. You hear that? Save it because we are going to do a review and I think it's going to be really, really useful. Just think about this example and, um, and try to keep it right there on the back burner just so you can practice. Try to use these as much as you can. All right? Okay. So the next one is going to be the accountant person, right? So in Spanish, an accountant person is, is, is called contador. And basically what it means is the person that counts, okay? So if you want to know how count, like contar, counting is, is said, 
or count. Basically, the verb is contar. Spell, and, and then the profession is contador. So it's actually really also similar as well as enfermera and enfermo. Let's spell contador for you. C as in cat, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, T as in tomato, A as in apple, D as in dog, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit. But if it would be A <clears throat> female, then it would be an A after the R. Contadora. Contadora. Contador. Contadora. Yo soy contadora. Tú eres contador. Él es contador. Ella es contadora. Nosotros somos contador. Es. You remember that? It's again, we have that R. It's a consonant. Therefore, the plural on the masculine is going to go with an E and an S. Contadores. All right? And ustedes son contadoras. Okay? So, pretty easy. Just remember, and if, if you ever want to say, uh, contar or the or the verb, you know, the action of counting is going to be contar. So all you do is C as in cat, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, T as in tango, A as in apple, and R as in Robert. That's the infinitive form of the verb count, contar. Okay? We're going to go back and touch that. I, that was just like a side note. Okay. So now let's talk about, how about a psychologist? Right? A psychologist is, is very diff. I mean, it's kind of similar, but not. Uh, it's, this one is a weird case in which you have a P as in Paul, S as in Sam, I as in ice cream, C as in cat, O as in Oscar with an accent, L as in Lori, O as in Oscar, G as in golf, O as in Oscar if it's uh, masculine, and A if it's feminine. Psicólogo. Okay, even though this is going to be a tricky word, you should say it psicólogo. That's the way it would sound if you force it. But most of people just pronounce psicólogo, just regular, like if it, it was only an S. Okay? Most of people are not going to say psicólogo. Okay? Um, again, it always sounds more like S than anything, but if you're going to write it down, it has to have the P, okay? So, yo soy psicóloga, tú eres psicólogo, él es psicólogo, ella es psicóloga, nosotros o nosotras somos psicólogas, ustedes son psicólogos, ellas son psicólogas. Um, Another profession that is very interesting is going to be, okay, so if you are a self-employed person or an entrepreneur or you have your own business or you sell um, stuff at, or, of some sort, uh, this is a general way in Spanish they call them comerciante, kind of like commerce, right? Kind of the camera of commerce. Okay, basically it's the same. You're a comerciante. And that spell C as in cat, O as in Oscar, M as in Mary, E as in elephant, R as in Robert, C as in cat, I as in igloo, N as in Nancy, T as in tomato, E as in elephant. Okay, this is one of the very few professions that does not have a gender. Okay. Can you guess what is the reason why it doesn't have a gender? Dee, 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 dee. Well, I hope you guessed it. The reason why is because it doesn't end with an A or a no. It ends with an E. And E is a, let's say, a standard, right? So, yo soy una comerciante, o yo soy comerciante, tú eres comerciante, Él es comerciante, ella es comerciante. It's the same word. You can, if you want to, um, make it more, okay, if you want to say, I'm una mujer that is running this business, you can say, 
soy una comerciante, because you're, if you're typing it and you want to be sure that they know you're a woman, then you can say that. Or soy un comerciante. Um, if you're speaking and they know who you are, it's not necessary. You just say, soy comerciante. Nosotros somos comerciantes. Ellas son comerciantes. It doesn't change. Okay? So just remember, if they end on a knee, you don't really have to worry about it. There's not going to be a lot, a lot like this. Very, very few, actually. Um, so let's see another one, and that is going to be, how about an electrician? Okay, this is also another exception that I wanted to bring. This is going to be totally an exception, all right? Watch. Electricista. Electricista. Most of people in the Spanish-speaking countries that are electricistas are, are males. Most of them, okay? I don't know, maybe now that has changed. Regardless of that, this profession ends in an A. You see that? This is going to be one of the few exceptions that uh, even if you say, let's spell it for you first. It's going to be E as an elephant, L as in lorry, E as an elephant, C as in cat, T as in tomato, R as in Robert, I as an igloo, C as in cat, I as an igloo, S as in Sam, T as in tomato, A as an apple. Whew, that's a long one, right? So, yo soy electricista, tú eres electricista, listen, él es electricista, ella es electricista, nosotros somos electricistas. Even if they're guys, it's going to remain with an A, and you're just going to add an S when you're doing the plural, okay? One of the few exceptions. I wanted to be sure that I give you like a mix of there is many more professions than what I have on, on my list today. But I wanted to give you like a good mix of exceptions, examples, and all that. Ustedes son electricistas. Ellos son electricistas. Okay? This is going to be hard to spell. So if you want to learn how to say it, you try to pronounce it on syllables. e le c tri sis -ta. Okay? Practice it like that, and you are going to be, um, you're going to see how you, you can pronounce it easier, right? All right, so the next one is going to be, how about a plumber? Okay, that one is going to be easier than electricista, and it's not an exception. P as in Paul. Okay, let me tell you first. Plomero. And I think that when I left Mexico many, many, many years ago, 24 to be exact, they were more also male that were plumbers than women. So it was pretty much plomeros all, all over. Now, if there is a woman that is a plumber, then she would be a plomera. P as in Paul, L as in Lori, O as in Oscar, M as in Mary, E as in Elephant, R as in Robert. And if you're a guy, O as in Oscar. And if you're a girl, A as in Apple. Yo soy plomera. Tú eres plomero. Él es plomero. Ella es plomera. Nosotras somos plomeras. Ellos son plomeros. Ustedes son plomeros. Ok, easy peasy. Also, since it ends in, a, in, a, in an O, you just add an S. So that's an easy peasy. Now, how about a construction worker? So this one is not similar at all in Spanish. Ok. I guess you could say constructor, but the real word that you're going to hear in Spanish speaker con speaking countries is going to be albañil. I know, it sounds a little complicated, but it's not. A as in apple, L as in lorry, B as in boy, A as in apple, Ñ, I as in igloo, L as in lorry. Okay? Albañil. Now, nowadays, there's a lot of women 
I applaud you because I probably I couldn't do that. They work in construction and they are very good at it. Um, so I'm gonna say that in this case, this is one of other exceptions in which is not going to have a gender uh, when you know, depending on if it's a, a a man or a woman. Why? I know you already know the answer because it ends on an I. And an I is one of those letters also that are kind of neutral, right? So basically in Spanish, your typical letter for, for fe- to say female or woman is A, and to say man or masculine is O. If anything ends on an E, an I, and I don't think there's a profession that ends in an ooh, unless it's mid, medium, which is the same in English, right? <laughs> or something like that. But, and that one is not going to change. Also, you can be a woman medium and you can be a guy medium. And it's spelled the same way, guys. So I'm not going to spell it. You just, instead of saying medium, you say, you know, the person that reads the tarot or whatever, or that speaks with the dead and spirits and all that, it gets spelled pretty much the same way. But instead of saying medium, you say medium. Because remember, in Spanish, the I sounds E, okay? So, okay, so let's uh, do the albañil thing. Yo soy albañil. Tú eres albañil. Él es albañil. Ella es albañil. Nosotras somos, okay, remember, this ends on a consonant. So, it's going. you're going to add what? E, S. Does not matter. If nosotras somos mujeres. Nosotras somos albañiles. Ellos son albañiles. Ustedes son albañiles. So it's going to have the same ES because it ends in a consonant. And in this case, it was an I instead of an O and an A. So it's not going to change. It's going to be the same for everybody. And that means... Basically, a construction worker, okay? So that's what the word that you're going to hear more likely when you, when you are speaking about, about this profession, okay? Now, let's talk about a cook, okay? That's the person you don't want to piece off, right? Because he's cooking your food. So, yeah, no. Um, so a cook, remember that we learned when we were learning about the, the house parts, Remember, we learned how to say kitchen. You remember that? It's cocina. Okay. And I told you the profession was very similar. So let's spell the word cocinero. And if you are a girl, like me, I love to cook. So I consider myself a cocinera, even though, I mean, it's not basically my actual profession, profession, but I look, I'm a proud cocinera. Okay. So it's going to be C as in cat. O as an Oscar, C as in cat, I as an igloo, N as an Nancy. If we were going to say kitchen, we put an A as an apple there. But since we're talking about the profession, we put an E as an elephant, R as in Robert. And if you're a guy, O as an Oscar. And me, I put A as an apple. Cocinero. Yo soy una cocinera. O yo soy cocinera. Tú? Eres cocinero. Él es cocinero. Ella es cocinera. Nosotros somos cocineros o nosotras somos cocineras. Ellos son cocineros. Ustedes son cocineras. Okay? Cool. So that's an easy one too because it ends on an O or an A. There's no exceptions right there. But it, it is very similar to the way the kitchen. You know what I mean? Cocina, cocinero, cocinera. Okay, so now let's go for this one, a driver. Okay, most of people in, in Spanish-speaking countries are going to call a driver chofer. That is going to be the main word that you are going to hear. Same with albañil, you can also hear constructor, which is construction, you know, constructor. But that's not usual. That's why I'm not teaching you that. And same with driver, um, they can be called con- conductor, you know, the person that is conducing the car or whatever. But the real word that you're going to hear is chofer, okay? I'm going to teach you that one. I'm sure it's probably the same as in English. C as in cat, 
H as in hotel, O as in Oscar, F as in Frank, E as in elephant, R as in rabbit. Sounds exactly the way you spell it. Chofer. Okay? And again. So what happens if I'm a woman and I'm the driver? How are you going to say it? Let's see if you learn what I taught you before. Am I going to say, yo soy chofera? No. Why? Because it ends in an E, remember? So when it ends in an E, it doesn't matter. Yo soy chofer. Tú eres chofer. Él es chofer. Ella es chofer. Nosotras somos, listen, choferes. Again, we're just going to put the E in the S. Nosotras somos choferes. Ellos son choferes. Ellos, as per masculine, right? Plural. Ustedes, can be whatever, son choferes. Did you catch that? Okay, good. This is going to be good practice also. Because when you hear, now you're going to know, well, if it's E, I, U, more likely I'm not going to have to worry about making the feminine, masculine, I just can leave it like that, okay? Spanish has more exceptions, more rules that are followed than exceptions, okay? And to me, that means less frustrations because, believe me, when I learned English, I was frustrated. Every time I tried to learn a rule, I found out that there were 10 exceptions to that rule. So I was like, ah, yeah, that can be complicated, all right? So anyways, Let's go with the next, which is, uh, how about a salesperson? Okay, you can find, so when you're trying to find a salesperson, you can say, you need un vendedor or, or vendedora. I'm going to spell that. It's going to be a little long, but just keep up with it. V as in Victor, E as an elephant. N as a Nancy, D as a dog, E as an elephant, D as a dog. If you are a guy, O as an Oscar, R as a rabbit. If you are a girl, A as an apple, and that's it. Vendedora. So when you when is the masculine, the word ends. Only on the on the R, vendedor. If you are a feminine or you want to make it a feminine uh, gender, then you're going to have to add the A and it's vendedora. All right? After the R as in rabbit. Okay, so yo soy vendedora. Tú eres vendedor. Él es vendedor. Ella es vendedora. Nosotras somos vendedoras. Ellos son vendedores. Ustedes son vendedoras. Or you can also say, ustedes son vendedores. And again, we have that R right there. So we, on the masculine, we have to add ES. Remember? I think you're going to be a super mega expert after this podcast because we are having so many opportunities of practicing. Practice is very important. Okay? So now, how about, I want to teach you these three last Professions, because they're important. Firemen. Okay, this is going to sound kind of silly. It's kind of a silly word, but in Spanish, a fireman or a firewoman, whatever it is, right? It's, you call it bombero. I do not know if this word comes from bombas, which is bombs, same as in English, right? So, because it's kind of, you know, when I think about it, um. Maybe, you know, bombs cause explosions and then they go and put the fire out. I don't know. But it's very similar to bombas or bombs. So, bombero is spelled B as in boy, O as in Oscar, M as in Mary, B as in boy, E as in os uh, elephant, R as in Robert, O as in Oscar. Okay? And, of course, if you're a girl, then it's going to be an A as an apple. Yo soy bombera. Tú eres bombero. Él es bombero. Ella es bombera. Nosotros somos bomberos. Ellas son bomberas. Ustedes son bomberos. Now, let me tell you something that is important. 
when, say, for example, you are talking about three people and they're mixed genders, okay? So you have two guys and three girls, and you want to say that all, all of you guys are a profession. It's a Spanish rule that you keep it on the masculine gender. Such a macho, right? I know. <laughs> it's just the way it is, okay? So if I'm talking with, say I'm a, a doctor and I'm here hanging out with three girls that are doctors and two guys that are doctors too, even though we're more women, if somebody comes and asks, hey, what do you guys do? We're going to say, nosotros somos doctores. So that's just the way it is, okay? I didn't make the rules, I promise. Okay. So now I wanted to to let you know that because it might it might cross your mind. What if we're talking about nosotros? We are, and it's more than different, you know, genders. Yeah, you go masculine. Yeah, of course. It's like I said, it's a macho country. <laughs> um, okay. So now the next one is going to be policemen. It's important. You might. Well, no. Let's knock on wood. You're not gonna need a policeman. But let's spell it for you. It's, it's, it's said policia. Okay, policia. Now, this can mean necesito un policia, or also it can be when you're talking about the police department, also you call them policia, departamento de policia. So same like in English, you say, I'm going to call the police, or you can say, oh, here's the police officer, Right. But if you, in Spanish, you say, um, yo soy un policía, or yo soy policía, it basically means police officer. You don't need to say oficial and make it so complicated. It's, it's kind of understood on, on the context, right? Let's spell it for you. P as in Paul, O as in Oscar, L as in Larry, I as in Igloo, C as in Cat, I as in Igloo, with an accent, A as in Apple. This is one of the exceptions, like electricista. Remember, it ends with an A. But if you are a guy, you're still going to be un policía. Yo soy policía. Tú eres policía. Él es policía. Ella es policía. Nosotros somos policías. Ellos son policías. Ustedes son policías. It does not matter what gender you are talking about. The word is not going to change. And when you go plural, you just add an S, okay? So policia me means it's, it's just a standard word, even though it ends with an A, all right? Another one important that you're probably going to need on your vacations is your hairstylist. How about that? What if you need a haircut? You need to do your hair so you look all pretty or all handsome for your date, you know, nice dinner or whatever. So let's spell that word. It's, it's in Spanish. This is another exception where it doesn't matter what gender you are, it's going to be called the same way. Estilista. This word comes from style, basically, which is in Spanish, it said estilo, style, estilo. So basically, the profession is estilista, it comes from kind of the same uh, roots, right? So E as an elephant, S as in Sam, T as in tomato, I as an igloo. L as in lorry, I as in igloo, S as in Sam, T as in tomato, and A as in apple. Again, yo soy estilista, tú eres estilista, él es estilista, ella es estilista. Nosotras somos estilistas, ellos son estilistas, ustedes son estilistas. This one changed. It doesn't matter what gender you're talking about. It's going to be the same exact word. And when it goes to plural, you add an S as in Sam. So I know, like I said, there is many, many, many more professions. If you want, and if I miss the one that you wanted to learn, uh, shoot me a message or just post it on the Facebook group and just say, hey, how do you say whatever I didn't mention? You know, and I will be happy to give you the translation there on Facebook. And also, we bring it up, up for the next time that we have a podcast about professions. All right. So, like I said, we cannot like have them all because then we need to be here sitting like for what, like eight hours? I wouldn't mind, but you know, 
<laughs> like Cousin. So anyways, let's talk now about different things that I thought about, like levels of education. It's, this is not going to be a lot, um, but say, for example, if you are talking about a kid that is on elementary, okay? So in Spanish, it's going to be said primaria. And do you see like the P, R, is P as in Paul, R as in Robert, I as in Igloo, M as in Mary, E as in Elephant, R as in Robert, I as in Igloo, A as in Apple. This comes from, uh, so if you want to say first, you say primero. And this word comes from that. This is the first school the kids used to go to. Now we have kindergarten and pre-kindergarten and whatever else, right? But when all the, the education system started it, this probably was the first school the kids attended. That's why they call it primaria. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I'm telling you that it comes from primero is because the next school comes from second. So think about it. First, you say primero. The school is primaria. I'm not going to sp spell primero because we have another podcast for that, okay? So now, the next school, which is here, it would be what? Junior high, I guess you can say. Um, that one comes from second or segundo. And actually, think about the word second, okay? The school is said, it's called secundaria. You see that relation with, okay? So secundaria. Now, in... Um, at least in Mexico, in the north of Mexico, because I know many things change, uh, the elementary is six years, okay? So you start when you're six, you get out when you're 12. And that's when you go to secundaria. S as in Sam, E as an elephant, C as in cat, U as an umbrella, N as in Nancy, D as in dog, A as an apple, R as in Robert, I as an igloo, and A as an apple. Secundaria. You might be talking to people in the cruise, and then you ask, oh, so what school are, uh, grade are your kids? And they might not say uh, first, second, whatever. They might say, oh, in primaria. That way you know. It's a kid that might be anywhere between 6 and 12 years old. If they say secundaria, it's going to be a kid anywhere between 12 and 15 years old because secundaria is 30 years long. Okay, basically you do, if we were going to transfer to the United States, seven, eight, and ninth, and then it would end right there, secundaria. Then high school. Okay, so the way high school, the, it, it, you're going to relate it with preparation because it's basically the school that is preparing you for college. So therefore, the way you call a high school is preparatoria. Preparatoria. Do you see that? It's preparing you for college. P as in Paul, R as in Robert, E as in elephant. P as in Paul, A as in apple, R as in Robert, A as in apple, T as in tomato, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit, I as in igloo, and A as in apple. That's a long word, right? Preparatoria. And that's the school. That prepares you from for college. Um, most of the of the pre, uh, preparatorias in the Spanish speaking countries are gonna be two three years long. So you're gonna go from 15 to 18, and then you go to college. Many other places they have only two years, so you get out when you're 17. And of course, um, you are going to have your college, which more than colegio, maybe in Spain. They're going to call it colegio, which is almost the same as college, colegio. But in Latin America, it's going to be just said like university. You're going to university, which is universidad. U as in umbrella, N as in Nancy, I as in igloo, V as in Victor, E as in elephant, R as in Robert, S as in Sam, I as in igloo, D as in dog, a as an apple and D as in dog. I know that sounds complicated, but when you do the syllables, it's going to be easier. Universidad. Just practice it like that. Universidad. Okay? And that's college in general. You can go to universidad and do master's degrees. I can hear, I mean, everything. It's just called the same way. 
Okay. Um, I have more other uh, ways or levels of education, but we're going to come back to that because I don't want to uh, finish that. I I, I want to teach you how to say masters and, and all that, bachelors, but I want. I think it's more important to teach you a few questions that you can ask if you interact with some people on the work environment or you just want to hang out and ask questions, okay? So that is going to be... Um, say for example, you want to ask somebody, what do you do, you know, for a living? Okay. Remember, we are not going to translate the same way. So don't expect that those are the, you're going to see the same verbs. Okay. In Spanish, if you want to ask somebody, what do you do, you know, for a living? Then you say, en que trabajas? And that is going to be E, spell E as an elephant, N as a Nancy, space, Q as in Quebec, U as an umbrella, E as an elephant, and you're going to add a accent because you're asking a question, okay? Remember, when we ask the question, que always has, or most of the question words have the, an accent, okay? And then trabajas, which means work, you know what, you know, basically trabajar means work, Okay? as the verb you're working, right? Or you work at whatever place, or you work as this and that. So trabajas is spelled T as in tomato, R as in Robert, A as in apple, B as in boy, A as in apple, you know, J or J as in John, A as in apple, S as in Sam. And then question mark. ¿En qué trabajas? That means what do you do? But in reality, you're saying basically the word work, okay? ¿En qué trabajas? If you're talking to, you know, somebody, if you're talking to plural, ¿en qué trabajan? Instead of having an S, you're going to have an N because you're talking plural. ¿En qué trabajan? Okay? Now, another important question that you might ask is, where do you work at? Easy, because you already learned this one. You remember your questions. How do you say where? You say, donde. And because we are asking the question, we need to do add the accent on the O. So D as in dog, O as in Oscar with an accent, N as in Nancy, D as in dog, E as in elephant, space, trabajas, same word that I already spelled for you. And also, it does, you're talking to one person. ¿Dónde trabajas? Question mark. If you are talking to multiple people, or even if you're talking to two people, and you're asking both the same question, you're going to say, ¿Dónde trabajan? Okay? Easy peasy. If you learn these words, these questions, it's going to be really easy for you. You can use them a lot. Now, how about where do you go to school? <clears throat> or what are you studying? Right? What are you going to school for? Easy in, easier in Spanish. ¿Qué estudias? Question mark. Okay, ¿qué? Would you know what it is? What? Right? And then, it's, again, I don't need to spell it because you already know how to spell it. I just spelled it earlier. Now, the way you're going to say studying or, um, or uh, study or, you know, the verb is going to be E as an elephant, S as in Sam, Tu as in tom T as in tomato, U as an umbrella, D as in dog, I as an igloo, A as an apple, and S as in Sam. Question mark. ¿Qué estudias? Super easy. Okay. Now, again, how are we going to do the plural? Can you answer this question? One, two, three. If you said you're going to change the S as in Sam for an N and say, ¿Qué estudian? all of you, plural, then you got the answer right. Okay? ¿Qué estudias? ¿Qué estudian? And my last question for you today is going to be, basically, basically, what is your profession? Right? Like, you can work as a cook, but maybe you went to school to be an engineer. You see what I mean? This is a concept. This is the difference between... What do you do? Or what, are you, what do you work? ¿En qué trabajas? 
among or, or the difference with what is your profession, right? You might have gone to school to be an attorney and then you hated it and you decided to become a cook or vice versa. <clears throat> I don't know, you know? So what is your profession? And then do you remember in English, you, you, were, you will be saying que, but like I said, in Spanish, we're not going to use the same. So in this case, we're going to use your, your question word that is cual, cual, which in English that would be translated as which, right? So in Spanish, it won't be very correct to say que es tu profesión. I mean, I guess anybody would understand you, but it wouldn't sound grammatically correct. So, cual, you already know how to spell it, but I'm going to run the spelling in Spanish for you. C-U-A-L. Only because you already know how to spell it. S, you know how to spell it, but still. E-S, E as an elephant, S as in Sam. S, which is, you know, same as in English, is, right? Cual es tu, you, like yours, tu, T as in tomato, U as an umbrella, profesión. Now, get your pen or your laptop or whatever you're typing notes with. P as in Paul, R as in Rob, Robert, O as in Oscar. E as in F as in Frank, E as in elephant, S as in Sam, I as in igloo, O as in Oscar, with an accent, and N as in Nancy. It's almost the same as in English, right? Profession? I think it's easier to spell in Spanish. I don't know. ¿Cuál es tu profesión? Okay, now, let me tell you this. In this case, if you talk plural, the word profesión is not going to change. What is going to change is that instead of saying, ¿Cuál es tu profesión? You say, ¿Cuál es su? S as in Sam, U as in umbrella. We are going to uh, go, and I'm going to explain more about this in the future, but I do want to tell you that when you switch to plural on this, you say, ¿Cuál es su profesión? And I think that we have actually had a lot of information and also a lot of practice for you today. I want to encourage you to keep practicing using these words and using these conjugations. That's going to be really, really relevant on, on your Spanish-speaking uh, progress and the way you learn and everything. Just don't feel like it's an obligation. Feel like you're enjoying yourself and you're getting ready for, I mean, hey, you might get a, a job raise if you speak a little Spanish. You never know. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us today and for listening and for having taken the journey of learning Spanish with us. So I hope that I can come with your preference next week and I hope you can listen to, your, to our podcast. Please follow us and please share with your friends so more people can come and learn Spanish with Carla. See you next week. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios.